In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today does come from the book of Judges. And this, I'm not going to lie, I totally pulled a lot of my ideas about this lesson from the sermon I heard yesterday. So we have a brother at Dalrada that was preaching last night, gave a phenomenal lesson on the life of Samuel. Sorry, not Samuel. <laughs> the life of Samson. Been a long weekend. I've uh, it's been a lot of work. But gave a lesson on Samson. And... Even though I'm familiar with the story and could give anybody a, a summary of it or just help someone understand the basics of it, like so many other Bible stories, you can understand different aspects of the story, different morals that the story is trying to teach once you really delve into it. And that was something that he did a phenomenal job of this past Sunday night. And if you think about Samson and the kind of life that he lived, there's not a whole lot that's heroic about him, and this was sort of his main point of the whole thing. He's somebody that was very strong, but he also was known really not for his heroic deeds, but more for his vices. The guy certainly had a taste in loose women. I mean, he got caught with a prostitute at one point. Um, his... He constantly went after Philistine women, not Israelite women, which at that time it was forbidden for the Israelites to intermarry with Philistines. And so he basically did what he wanted, and he had an eye for women that were not reputable, not godly women at all, and for several of them, and didn't seem to be real attached to the idea of marital fidelity in a number of different ways. He also cheated people with a riddle that only he could solve and actually bet on it. So he was a philanderer and a cheater. And when people displeased him, when they did something that he didn't like, it was not uncommon for him to kill people, for example, the people that caught him with the prostitute, and in one point actually burned the crops of the Philistines, burned up people's food. So in a lot of ways, Samson is kind of the villain for most of the story. I mean, the vast, vast majority of the story. And at the end of his life, he did do something kind of selfless, kind of heroic. But it was also somewhat motivated by revenge. Because, of course, we know that what happened to Sam, uh, Samson is that Delilah tells the Philistines the secret of his strength. They cut his hair. He's no longer superhumanly strong. And so they bind him and they gouge his eyes out and torture him. And he's being held there in a temple. And so finally, he prays that the Lord would restore his strength to him just for a little bit. And he dies in destroying the temple. But even then, his motives for doing so were at least partially motivated by revenge and his hatred for the people that have wronged him. Not so much he was doing it for the sake of Israel or to please God, but more because he wanted to take vengeance on those that had wronged him. And so there's really not a whole lot heroic about Samson's life. And you know, it's so funny, I've often wondered, because I'm kind of a superhero nerd, as anybody that's been listening to me for a while knows, I've often wondered why God didn't allow us to have some kind of abilities, you know, like mutant powers with the X-Men or the Inhumans, something like that, that you could occasionally get some kind of superhuman ability. And then I look at the, the story of Samson, and you kind of understand why God thought that wasn't a great idea. Because one of the, really the only person that we know of that got superhuman strength from God wasn't really a good guy and didn't use it well. 
And I think part of the reason for that is power is so incredibly intoxicating. And people can do a lot of bad with it. And they're more apt to do bad with it, specifically because they have that power, which is intoxicating and tends to corrupt people. And so I think that's a big part of the reason that we don't have supernatural powers like Samson did. And in the case of humanity, think about this. We have made an incredibly imperfect world. And you look at just recently that with the power that human beings do have, the power of technology, the ability to make weapons like firearms, look at the horrible things that some people have done with that power. Can you imagine what it would be like if people were as supernaturally strong as Samson who could kill a thousand people in one fight? I mean, think about how incredibly horrific that would be if you just got one person like Samson who didn't have upright morals and still had that ability. Imagine if there were a lot of people like that. So I think that the Lord is very wise in doing this, but this really brings me to a culmination of, of where the lesson was going. And this comes from Judges 13, 3 through 5. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Behold now, you are barren, and have borne no children, but you shall conceive and give birth to a son. Now therefore be careful not to drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. For behold, you shall conceive and give birth to a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the boy shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel from the hands of the Philistine. So this is the prophecy that the angel gives Samson's mother about his life. And having looked at everything that we just looked at, is any of that not true? He was a Nazarite from the womb, and no razor came upon his head up until the point where Delilah cut his hair and weakened him. And he also did begin to deliver the children of Israel from the Philistines. But what's interesting about that is it was largely unintentional. Samson didn't set out to do what God had purposed him to do. He didn't set out to follow God's will to defeat the Philistines, to liberate Israel from their control. In fact, he intermarried with the Philistines and seemed to spend an awful lot of time with them. And it wasn't until Samson, in his own selfish rage and vengeance, took it out on the Philistines for his own purposes, that that started to take place. But the point is it took place nonetheless. That God used Samson in a very specific way that even though Samson's designs and, and will did not align with God's, God was still able to use him to serve his greater purpose and to help those that were innocent, the people that should have been helped by somebody like Samson. God was still able to make that a reality. And the more I thought about it, in a lot of ways, Samson kind of reminds me of President Trump. Somebody that was loose with women, that was kind of noted for having some shady deals and some shady connections, and was not someone that anybody should really uphold as some kind of moral leader. And by the way, don't take this the wrong way. I'm not saying that people should vote for President Trump because he's Samson and we need to say, I'm not saying any of that. So don't take what I'm saying out of context. I'm just saying that there are a lot of similarities that even though... Uh, Trump is by no means somebody that I think that people should want as a leader. You look at some of the effects that he has caused, even though I don't think that he really believes that he's some kind of dyed-in-the-wool Christian that believes in these things that are right, that sort of as a side effect, and I think partially through divine providence, look at the way the church is right now. We're finally actually making some headway. When it comes to the issue of abortion, Christians are starting to wake up and realize that their faith is really under attack. And by the way, you could say the same thing about President Obama. He too caused a lot of Christians to wake up and realize that's what was going on. And so even bad leaders, even leaders that I don't think that God would necessarily want or think is ideal, can still be used for God's purpose. A very flawed individual 
that even though they're not acting in God's best interest, God's best interest is still served by them. But the, really where I want all of this to hit home and, and the message that I think that we can take from it in our personal lives is how much better would Samson be if he just did what God asked him to? Granted, Samson sort of inadvertently did an awful lot of good. But how much more useful could Samson have been if he had stayed away from the women that he wasn't supposed to be with, had played fair and been honest and been a morally upright person? Because you think about that even though goodness knows he had his flaws too. You compare somebody like Samson as a leader to somebody like David. David certainly had his moral failings, but he did repent and he tried to do the right thing. And even though he didn't have supernatural abilities like Samson, he did a lot more good for Israel. Samson, with all of his abilities, all of his potential, chose not to do what God asked him to do. God was still able to use him. But how much more good could he have done if he had stayed on God's side? And how much more do you think God would have been able to bless him and establish him to where he wouldn't have had to go through a lot of the stuff that he went through to be able to serve that end goal? You see, this is not an excuse to welcome evil into your life. I mean, if you were an Israelite at this time, you don't welcome a leader that is as immoral and wicked as Samson. But I do think that it's important for us to realize that we're going to serve God either way. No matter what choices we make, no matter what we do, whether we are a faithful Christian from the time of accountability to the time that we die and serve him to the best of our ability, or the exact opposite. Even if we actively work against his will, eventually all things do work together in concert for God's plan. The question is, what side of that battle do we want to be on? Do we want to be an intentional force for good or a force of evil that God is able to make good come out of? Because those are our only options. We're going to serve him either way. It makes a lot more sense to serve him intentionally and to avoid the kind of problems that Samson had on this side of eternity and probably in the next as well. Stay the course, friends. <laughs>